Okay, great. So it's like 50-50. So, uh, welcome to my talk about the group module for Drupal 8. It's bigger, better, and definitely most sexier. Um, my name is Christian van den Ende. I'm a Drupal developer at Decent. However, recently I've been told that we can choose our own names in the Slack channel, so now I change it to something else. So it's Captain Awesome now. Um, if you see me in the hallway and you address me like that, I'm really going to like you. Um, so I'm from Antwerp, Belgium, really nice city. Uh, in my opinion, the best city in Belgium, but obviously that's because I'm born there. Um, I'm happily married. I have an awesome cat called Django. And I'm a high sensitive person, which basically means nothing right now, but sometimes I just freak out, get panic attacks. So if I drop you know, to the floor, do check my pulse, that would be nice, but I'm probably not dead. So um, just saying. So what is group? Um, Group is a management tool. And that sounds boring, so, oh, skip there. So group is actually awesome, and it allows you to group content together following a specific set of rules. It also allows you to grant users permissions for a small section of the site, and it allows you to control access to uh, those pieces of content. Um, so what about organic groups is probably what you're all wondering, because if you're interested in group, you've probably already used organic groups before. Um, so I'm not going to bash organic groups, because um, I'm going to let you decide for yourself after this session which module you like more. But just for completeness sake, I am going to list what I personally disliked about it. Um, so basically, I didn't really like the fact that it repurposes existing entities. So wh what I mean by that is that in order to use organic groups, you need to like tie it to a node or a user or whatever entity you want, but it doesn't really exist on its own. Um, its groups can overrule configurations, so on the group level, you can overwrite what was set on the top level, which is why it's called organic, but I don't really like that concept because if you have a user that doesn't really know what he's doing and he has enough permissions, he could potentially open up a big can of worms. Um, all of its magic is uh, based on who has what field, so again, because it's like piggybacking on top of other entities, it's attaching fields to them, and you know it just works because those fields are there, so if you don't know what those fields do, you accidentally delete it, whoops, your group content is suddenly public. Um, and the user and developer experience wasn't really great. So that being said, that's all I'm going to say about organic groups, because obviously some of you may wonder why I decided to write an alternative. So what's Group's approach? Uh, group's approach is actually a story about the happiness of content. So um, at Decent, we, you, you see those little guys at the bottom, they're called flurps. We, we designed them you know, to, to market group with. So at Decent, we have flurps, and they all go to the Drupal Content College. And as you can see by their shirts, some of them are you know, studying a major to become nodes. Um, some of them are studying you know, to become users. And the other guys want to become taxonomy terms. So come graduation day, they're all really excited because they just you know, studied for a long time to become what they want to, uh, wanted to become. And now they you know, want to go to websites and get a job as a user or a node or a taxonomy term. And most of them actually do because most websites just you know, use them like that. They hire them for what they were trained to be. But not all of them. Some of them, like a couple of months in, still don't have a job. So they're wondering, like, what's going on? Why, why, why do I, you know, not get a job? Why am I not, uh, not able to do what I actually want to do? And when they finally do get a job, someone's telling them, like, yeah, but you're not going to be a node or a user. You're a group. And they're like, what? But I, I studied, like, for three years to become a node, and now I'm a group? What's that? How do I even be a group? Like, what, what does that mean? So obviously they're unhappy. I mean, you can tell by their faces, they're not happy. So group fixes this. It makes the flurps happy again. So how does group fix this? Um, by introducing a new major at the Drupal Content College. So basically the new major is group. So when graduation day comes, um, there's happy graduates all around because now those guys that were told that they needed to be groups are actually you know, qualified to be groups. So they're really happy. So what are the takeaways here? Uh, groups do what they meant, were meant to do all along. And we don't touch other entities. And I really need to change that line because I've also used that at my talk in London. And it's, it's like double barreled because, you know, touch, whatever. Um, and Flurp should be happy. 
So there, there, there is like one uh, thing I'd love to mention here is that when I said that groups do what they were meant to do all along, in developer speak, that means that a group is actually a dedicated entity, a dedicated class with all sorts of cool methods that you can use. So there's not like numerous functions you need to know by heart. For instance, you know, like OG has, um, it's really easy to use it, full IDE support, so that's great. Um, as I just mentioned, actually, I've given this talk before in London and I've adjusted it a little bit and now I named it, uh, you know, definitely most sexier. So um, just to meet that criterion, uh, here's a flurb in a bikini. Um, so yeah, that's about that settled. So how does group work? So um, groups have group types and group types are like content types, but for groups. So um, it allows you to field groups. But it does so much more than that. It allows you to set roles, permissions, and available content for all groups of that type. So just like nodes, where all nodes of a specific node type need to follow the rules laid out by that node type, the same goes for groups. All groups of a specific group type follow the rule set that was set out for that group type. So as I just said, it applies to all uh, groups of that type, but there are no per group overrides. So this is actually a benefit, in my opinion, where as a site builder, you configure your rules, your permissions, you configure what you want people to be able to do with and within groups, and there's no way people can circumvent that, unless there's a bug in my module, obviously, but let's assume there's no bugs. Um, so it also serves to content stories. So when you want to add content to a group, there's actually two stories how you want to be able to add it to a group. And the first one is, you know, the story of why or how. So you actually care about the entity that you're putting in a group, but not really. You, you, you care more about how or why it's part of that group. So for instance, if you want to add users to a group as members, you don't really care about the user accounts. You care about, you know, why that user account is in this group. And perhaps if you have fields on that membership, you care, you know, about how it's in that group, what, what quantifies that user as a member. Um, so a great example is a gaming portal. Um, there are like websites that sell clans for different sort of games, like their mini websites. So it's, it's really like a portal website. So if you log into that website, you have one account one user, but on that website are multiple subsites for all different types of games, and let's call those groups. So if as a user you want to join one of those clans, you join it and then you need to fill out fields. Like uh, if you want to join a Minecraft clan, which is like Lego for adults, you need to perhaps tell them how many blocks you can mine per hour. And if you want to join a shooter clan like Call of Duty, you need to tell them how well you can headshot people. I don't know, I'm just making this up. Um, so this is one user, but for every group he joins, he needs to provide different metadata about his relation to that group. So this is the story of why or how. But there's also a different story. There's also the story of what. So sometimes when you add content to a group, you don't really care about why or how that's part of a group. You just care about, you know, the fact that it's part of a group. You care about the content itself. So that's usually the case for nodes, because a lot of use cases when you put nodes inside of groups is to actually prevent access to people that aren't part of the group. So a great example here is paid content. We've all seen it, uh, newspaper websites with paywalls. This is what group would be an excellent module for because you could sell a membership to a group and once you're a member of that group, you could see you know, the paid content. And if you're not, then you'll get an access denied or a brief summary and then a button saying, you know what, sign up to this group. It costs, I don't know, $30 a year, uh, stuff like that. But the cool thing is that these two stories do not you know, they, they can coexist. They are not mutually exclusive. So you could care about what you're putting inside of a group and still feel that relation and also care about how it's part of the group. So it's actually three stories, but the third one is just a combination of the former two. So let's talk about how the entities are actually, you know, put inside a group. So let's assume for a second that we have a group type press area and we have like one instance of it and we have a node type press release and we have one node of it and we want to put that inside of a group. 
So how we do that with the group module, and this is stuff you don't need, really need to worry about, but it's important that I explain it to you, is we have a relationship entity between that. And you don't need to create those entities. Group does that for you. But the important part is that they are fieldable. So if you let that sink in for a second, this means that for every node you place inside of a group, you can provide metadata for that relation. For every member, you can provide metadata for that relation. And you can choose that metadata. No longer does the module enforce you to use like joins dates or whatever, because if you want that info, just add it. If you don't want it, well, less data in the database. So you don't really need it then. And it varies per group type and per target entity type. So right now we're trying to add a press release to a press area and we can add metadata to that relation. But if we also wanted to add, let's say, downloadable PDFs to that press area, then we could field that in a different way. So we don't need to have the same fields on the press release relation as we do on the downloadable file relation. So this is really flexible. You, you'll love this part and I'll demo that soon. Um, there is one asterisk behind per target entity type. I'll get to that later because there's actually even much more that you can do with it, but it would just confuse you at this point of the demonstration. And it's managed by plugins. Um, so in Drupal 8, we have this new system, the, the plugin API, which allows module maintainers to actually create like base plugins that other developers can extend. Um, just in regular English, it means lots of functionality already there for you. You need to write very little code and you can do all sorts of cool stuff with the module without actually needing to know a lot about how the module works. So what does that mean for a site builder? It's actually a site builder's dream because for each of those instances that I, um, I wanted to point at a slide that's no longer there. So for each of those instances that I just talked about, those relations, you can configure those from the UI. So obviously you can field them, so that's there, but you can even do more with it. Um, so it's a really flexible system and you, there's no coding required. So whatever the developer of that plugin exposes to you as configuration, you can set from the UI and it's actually really easy with your plugin to expose a lot of stuff. So, for a site builder, this is awesome because they don't need to know how to code and they will still be able to, you know, have a very specific instance of a plugin uh, which then controls how content is added to that group. So for developers, it's also a dream because, well, first of all, obviously coding is required. I just wanted to mention that for completeness. Um, but a lot of functionality is already provided because the group module ships with this base plugin that you can extend. So um, you actually don't really need to write a lot of code to enable your entity type to be groupable. Um, a very important one is you can enforce your plugins. So if you provide one of those relationship plugins and the rest of your module actually expects it to always be there, a good example is actually the group membership plugin. The whole module's permission system relies on that. You can enforce your plugin. And for every group type that gets created from that point on, your plugin is automatically installed. If you enable the module and you already had group types, all of those group types get your plugin. And it only takes as few as 10 lines in order to get started. So let me quickly show you what I mean by that. Um, this is what I mean by that. 10 lines, it's not actually even code, it's just an annotation. So what you see here is you know, the definition of the group membership plugin. And basically, you need to specify an ID, a label and a description just for the user interface. And then you specify what you're adding to a group. Um, that path key is going to be gone soonish, but it's basically something to clean up your URLs. And as you noticed, I enforce this plugin. That's all you need. So if you have a different content entity type and you want to enable that in a group, just you know, write this and you're golden. I'll demo that in a second as well. So here's the live demo. So um, I'm going to sit down for this and I'm going to show you some stuff. So. Let me, hold on, put this mic down so I can drag it over there. Okay. This is actually really annoying to, to work with like this. Um, let me go and stand over there. Oh. 
I hope that's still working. Yeah, it is. Where is my cursor? Oh, there we go. Okay, this is really annoying. So. Let's close this up. No, this one though, I'm gonna mirror my displays. It all suck for me, but I'm gonna do that instead. Because this just won't do. Hold on, give me a second. There we go. So now I have a very little, a small screen, but I, I basically like need this. So let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Can you still see that? Oh, yeah, you can, can't you? Okay, so let's let's do it like this. So, um, what does this look like in the group module? So as soon as you enable it, you get this group button at the top, and this is where everything resides. So there's nothing under content or structure. The reason for that is that just like people, you are defining access and permissions to your website. So it, it really needs to go in its own section. So it's all you know in one place. So. I enable two modules that ship with the group module, like just basic group and group node. Group node allows you to add stuff to a group, like nodes. So let's get started. I've got, wow, this interface is annoying. I've got, um, I've set up a group type, and this is the demo that I, that I you know, the, the use case that I mentioned earlier about clans. So I just created a group type, and if you want to look at the fields, I added two fields that say, you know, are you, what, what are you currently recruiting and what's the description of the clan. Um, furthermore, if we go to the group roles, so just like on the global level in a site, you have roles in a group type. And I added two custom roles to this group type. So these roles only apply to this group type. So again, every group type is like a special little snowflake. Two group types, they don't interfere. So that's very comforting to know. Um, so I added two roles. And if we look at the permissions page then, you'll see there's actually five. So why is that? Um, in order to do what group needs to do, there's always three roles out of the box. So the two that I added get you know, added to the screen. But you always need these three. Because first of all, um, you have the anonymous users. Obviously, they can join a group because they have user ID zero. So if they were to join a group, then everyone else that was browsing that website anonymously would share that membership. Then you have outsiders, or as some people like to call it, non-members. They actually have a website account, but they're not part of your group yet. Um, so obviously, they will perhaps have the permission to join the group, but yeah, they can't leave because they're not a member yet. And then you have the member role. Member is kind of like authenticated user on the Drupal level. Um, so every member automatically gets all permissions that are assigned to the member role. And they can still have other roles as well. So I've configured some roles for this demo's sake. So this looks very familiar. Um, the only thing you'll notice is that some of these boxes are actually unavailable. And those you can set yourself. So when you define permissions for this screen, so there's like a way to define extra permissions. You'll notice that um, you can define for what type they're available, for what audience, like anonymous outsider or members. So as I said before, it doesn't make sense to allow an anonymous user to join a group, and neither does it make sense to allow members uh, or users that are already a member to join a group because they're already a part. So you can set those permissions. So you can't accidentally like you know break the user interface that way. And last but not least. Um, you can enable content in a group type. And these are the plugins that I was talking about. So I just enabled the group node module, and I enabled the group module. And the group node module automatically created a plugin for each and every available content type. So I have three content types available, article, basic page, and a clan match report. And those are you know, available. 
but you don't have to enable them. So I can choose what content types can be part of groups of this type. So it's not that you can just add any nodes. You, you need to enable it because you can feel that relationship. So um, let me quickly show you the configuration of one of those, one of those plugins. Um, so when you install a plugin, you get this screen. And this is the screen that I talked about that you can extend like indefinitely. Um, so you can limit the amount of groups a node can be put in. So you can perhaps say this node can only be part of one group, or you could set that to zero and then that node could be placed inside any group. Um, you can also limit the amount of times a node can be placed inside of the same group. So for this plugin, because it controls access, it makes sense that you can only do that once, so this field is disabled. But for other plugins, you, you, know, you, you couldn't care less, perhaps. You, you want, actually, an entity to be added numerous times to that group. So that's all available. You can do that. And then there's some informational text that we put atop the form. You'll see that in a second. So just to demonstrate this for the group membership one, um, so you'll see I disabled this one as well because it makes sense here. But if I want to install a different one, I'm not going to, but s say I wanted to, I can choose this cardinality still. So it defaults to unlimited. Um, you'll also notice this little asterisk. This is the enforced plugin. So the group membership only has managed fields for that relation. But the group node one can actually be uninstalled. Because that one isn't enforced, I chose to enable that one. So I can choose to disable that one. And let me finally, so by the way, you'll notice that this is a lot of setup for the group type, but this is one time only. Once you do this, all groups of that type will follow this rule set. So this is something you like do once and forget about. So let's look at the fields. I configured here just for completeness sake. So this is a locked field because all memberships need a field that reference what roles they have. But I added an extra field that says, you know, why do you want to join us? That being said, let's have a look at this group. So I created one group and I filled out some info that said, you know, this is my amazing clan. We are the best and they are currently recruiting campers and lead hackers. So if you look at that group, You'll just, you know, see that group as if it were a node. So this is just another content entity in essence. And you'll notice that there's buttons here that allow you to join a group or, you know, create content in that group. But this is where I want to switch to my other screen. Because over here, I am logged in as a test user with a limited amount of permissions. So you'll see that he can join this group because we allowed outsiders to join a group. And when it does, you get that screen that we just configured, so that field, so why do you want to join us? And that text above this form tells you that by submitting this form, you will become part of the group. But you can choose not to have that text or you can change that text. It's all up to you. So let me quickly fill something out here and join this group. So now I'm part of this group. And this is my membership, which says, you know, why do you want to join us? And if I go back to that group, um, I allowed the members of this group to view the, uh, the other members and the nodes in this group. These two tabs that you see right now, I just created for the alpha version so that people would actually find, you know, have a way to find what they put inside of a group, but it's actually encouraged to use views because now we have full view support. And by the time we release a beta, this will be gone, but it, the module will ship with default views that make more sense. So I can, you know, View the members in this group, which is just me right now. I can edit my membership. I can view the notes in this group, and this is where I uh, where I want to, you know, say something about the notes because what you see right now, I already put a clan match report in this group, and you just see the title. And if I click on it, you don't really see anything. Well, because oh, oh yeah, it doesn't have access even. But this is because um, this is the distinction that you need to make. There's an entity that shows that relation, that feelable relation, and there's obviously the entity itself, the node itself. So let's swap back to the other browser. So in order to fix that, I created a view and that I want to show as well. So how do you create views with group? It's actually pretty easy. So when we go to views, 
and we go to the actual node. So this is a view I created right here. Then this is a pretty simple view. It starts with content. It shows a table. It just shows the title and the content type. And then, so it's a really simple view. But then we add a relationship to the group content. So the group content is the name of that relation. Um, I still need to, you know, I, I could probably rename some stuff. So I, I still have some issues open for that. But group content is a technical name of that fieldable relation. And you can filter um, the relations you want to use. So for instance, this is for the group nodes clan match report. But you could filter by any plugin. So for instance, if you only wanted to show the relations for clan match reports, you could. Suppose there's more enabled here. So we required that relationship. So now we have a link to that node that you know, hooks a group up with a node. And so now we have something that we can contextually filter on by group ID. So we just filter on that. By the way, um, for blocks, I also provided this plugin, just like the node module, to just get the group ID from the URL works perfectly. So let's have a look at that page. And that was actual nodes. So now we have a view that actually links to the nodes. So yeah. So you can do anything with these nodes. So why, why is it important that we'll ship this with um, default views? Because for instance, for memberships, you want those views to show data on the membership. And one of the things that is on a membership is what role someone has. You want bunk operations. So you want to create a view that actually handles those relation entities. For nodes, most of the time, as I t said before, you don't really care about that relationship. So you just want a view that displays those nodes and perhaps you know, allows you to see those nodes or edit them or whatever. Um, there's full access control in the module. So if I quickly show you the screen of the group type again, um, you, can, you can control the access to the nodes in a group by simply setting the permissions on your group type. So as soon as you enable that one plugin that allows you to you know, handle clan match reports, um, this is for the relation but this is for the actual node. So we decided that you know, only people who are part of the group can view that node. So if we try to visit this node while logged out, so let's go back to, let's go back to that node. So let's log out. Then you'll get an access denied for node 22. So access denied, because it's part of a group. If you remove that node from the group, it's public again. If you join the group, then all of a sudden you'll get access to that node. So access control is fully built in. Um, and finally, um, you notice that block to join a group or leave a group or add content to a group. Um, you know, those blocks, uh, I also added plugins for that, but different plugins that allow you to show blocks just on group pages. So if we go to that block with the, um, with the group operations, you'll notice that it can ask for a group. So we just define the group from the URL here. Just like you can restrict blocks for content types, you can also restrict them for group types. So if you have mul uh, multiple group types, you can do that. So that's that. <coughs> uh, final thing I wanted to show is the whole plugin system. So just for the sake of this demo, wow, this is small. So for the sake of this demo, I created a little module called NSA. And it just has nothing in the module file. This is to show you how, how you know, little code you need. It has nothing special in the info file, just you know, a dependency on group. And it only has one plugin. And this plugin doesn't really do anything special. So it just allows you to add users to a group. Uh, path key is NSA, and it's also enforced. So, if I go and turn on that plugin on the group type, so, well, first I, I need to enable the module, and because it's enforced, it should auto install itself on every existing group type. So, let's look for this module. 
and let's install it. Oh shit. Uh, oh yeah, I need to clear my cache as I move that module. Let me quickly... Um, this was called differently, but it didn't really make sense. So, function... Hold on. Refactor, rename. So, notify. Okay, just to be sure. Let's clear our caches. There we go. So let's have a look at this page now. I'm just going to go ahead and see if that actually installed or not, because I cleared my caches, it should just work. So yeah, we have that same error. Let's see, is it installed? Let's find, yes, it is, okay. So let's continue. And this is the, the more complex part that I told you about. So let's manage that group type again. And let's look at the available content. So now we have another enforced friendly neighbor watch list. And that allows you to add users to a group. But as I said earlier, other plugins may have different stuff. So you can add the same user multiple times to one group. So let's quickly demo that. Let's go to group one. Actually, let's go here. Let's go to the NSA uh, part of this group. So So, um, I didn't feel this relationship because I'm running out of time. So it will just, you know, show an entity reference field of who you want to add. So let's say I want to add the test user. I could uh, specify now why I want him on the friendly neighborhood watch list. I could say that his dog has shifty eyes or something. So this would be an incident report. But nothing stops me from adding that same person another time and then perhaps mentioning that his cat has shifty eyes as well. Nothing stops me because I didn't limit the amount of time that that same user could be added to the group using this plugin. So that's really useful. Um, and this is also cool because right now I'm adding user entities to the group, but that doesn't mean they're members because I'm adding them using the NSA plugin. So I'm just adding them like as, as content of this group and that means nothing user-wise. So even though these users are now part of this group, that doesn't mean they're members because I didn't add them using the membership plugin. This is an odd case, but suppose you have a group where your members can be admins and they can administer existing user accounts on the site. You would add the admins as members to that group, but the users that they would be able to administer could be added using a different plugin. Those users would never even know the fact that they're part of a group. Um, because they're not members, but that second plugin that allows you to add users would allow the admins of that group to actually perform administration actions on that user. So that was a lot to take in, um, but I hope it gave you know an idea of how powerful this module can be. Um, so let me go back to my slides and actually just you know for the final part, let's do it like this. Um, so. Very quickly, are there any questions? It's not a sub-module, it's embedded in group. So basically, um, oh, I need to repeat the question. So um, that relationship entity, is that embedded in group or is that a sub-module? It's embedded in group, but in a way that you don't really need to care about. Whenever you, as a developer, write a plugin, and that plugin gets installed on in a group type, we create that entity type for you. Actually, a bundle of a single entity type. So you never need to worry about that. It's all you know, hidden in the UI. So when you manage fields on a plugin, you're not really managing fields on a plugin. You're managing fields on the bundle of that relation entity that group created for you. So the entity type is provided by group. Yeah. 
Yeah, so um, he's asking because a relationship entity is something very powerful. It could be used in other areas outside of a group. That's true, which is also why I'm hiding it. Um, because uh, there's, you, you can only like adjust the relationship entity that gets created uh, for your plugin, either through your plugin or through alterations. But if you start altering that stuff, it means you dug into group and actually, or should, um, should realize, should know what, what's going on. So that should, you know, raise the bar a little bit. But um, yeah, it's really powerful. That's true. And I, I really love this because the data model, is, uh, data model is so great because every relation is fieldable. There's always metadata. So um, this is something that's missing in a lot of group modules, like organic groups and stuff. It only has one fieldable relation, which is the membership. Everything is fieldable in group. Every relation is fieldable. So if you want to add metadata, go ahead. You're, you're not limited. You can do it to any plugin. Any other questions? Yeah. So um, is the question, is it possible to create a user inside of a group? No, it's possible to use the user as a group. Oh, no. So this is what organic groups does. It's, it's piggybacking on top of other entities. So basically, uh, what I tell people when they want to know about that difference is, imagine um, all of the use cases, and then have a big circle for group and a big one for organic groups, then there's a, a very large intersection where both organic groups and the groups module can serve those use cases. But if your use case is actually that you want that piggybacking uh, to happen, that you want that user entity to be the group itself, then yeah, your choice is organic groups. If you want to have a pure entity that, you know, doesn't use an existing one and has a very clear data model and a very nice integration in your IDE, then use group. Um, there is one warning, though, that I would like to give. Um, usually when people use organic groups and they make the user the group, that's all pretty nice and dandy, but what happens if that user cancels his account? So how do you transfer the ownership of the group? With group, that's not a problem because the owner of a group is just another member, a privileged member. So if that guy cancels his account, then someone else can you know, become the admin of that group. So that's not really a problem. Okay. Yeah, not a problem here. So anyone else? Nope. Okay, um, so yeah, I, I was asked to tell everyone that we're hiring. So I work for Decent, as I said earlier. Uh, my con uh, colleague, Ronald, who's giving the next presentation, is as well. So if you're interested, just contact either of us. Um, we won't bite um, much. And I also would like to thank the sponsors of this event. So yeah, that's it. And thank you all for, you know, attending this session. <laughs>